an original MCM production. Hello, thank you for joining us today. My name is Val Wiley and I'm the Executive Director here at MATA. I'm hosting um, the MATA Community Media 2016 election interviews and we are fortunate today to have with us Senator Chris Larson. Hey. Hello, Senator. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me. Oh, <laughs> you are more than welcome. You know, you have run for several seats and you have been successful with each of those. Mm -hmm. Today, we're going to talk about a few things that you may have had success uh, with, like when you were a, with on the county board. Right. You also have had some successful ventures with the state as a senator. Yep. Why don't you share some of that information? Uh, sure. I mean, I ran for state senate back in 2010, uh, so it's a little over five years ago that we decided to run uh, against an incumbent, um, my own party, somebody who'd been in office for 14 years, um, half of that in the assembly, half in the senate, and um, realized that he was not doing what uh, a lot of his constituents thought he was. Right, he was voting against uh, our neighbors. He was voting against the environment. He was voting against the creation of jobs, and he was voting a lot of times with with the Republicans on issues, including even reproductive health. And uh, we looked at all that, and uh, I, I realized, you know, I, he's not representing my interest. And I thought, well, mo somebody should run against him. And it was very clear no one else was going to do that. Um, and so I had uh, some friends and family encourage me to do that. We ended up running against them, and it was no one gave us a chance. I mean, it was like three months from the time we announced to the election. Three months, which is not very long. And um, we ended up working really hard. We end up uh, we ended up getting outspent by a lot, um, but we still ended up winning by a 20-point margin against an incumbent. So we're pretty happy about that. Um, and um, I think. You know, it, it, it's it's uh, kind of in my mindset. If there's a fight that needs to be fought, um, and no one else is going to step up and fight that fight, then it's on you, right? It's on you to do that, and that's that's what I've tried to do with uh, in politics. That's what I try and do in life. So. Well, because of the variety of positions that you've held, how do you feel you've worked with others? Do you think yeah. it's gone well? Yeah, I mean, look, on the issues that, um, that are important to, to me, important to our neighbors, um, yeah, we do. We do work to get well together. And I think it's, you know, at the state level, um, when we came in, we, we thought that we would be having a Democratic governor and Democratic Senate, Democratic Assembly. That's what had been there when I was running. But this was 2010, right? Became a buzzsaw that kind of divided the state and Republicans took control. And Scott Walker was very intent on dividing the state and that was not something I wanted to be a part of. And so um, having worked opposite him at the county board, when I was a county supervisor, he was the county exec, I knew what his strategy was. And um, so I, I viewed it as my role to make sure that we were not just fighting against him. That was important to say, look, it's, it's not a good thing for us to cut education more than any time in our history state. It is not a good idea uh, for us to at the same time increase spending on, uh, on uh, uh, WEDIC, which we were not following the money on, um, and to do a lot of other things, increasing, increasing borrowing, um, you know, taking money away from programs that we cared about. And so we offered an alternative vision while we were fighting the bad things that he was doing, you know, going after workers, going after teachers, going after uh, those struggling in our community. So, you know, we fought against him, and uh, we worked with those who, who shared a better vision for our neighborhood, for our state. And so, you know, we work with people when it makes sense, but like, if somebody's intent on dividing and trying to hurt a community, I don't, I don't see the benefit of trying to work with somebody to try and help in that regard. Okay. So what are some initiatives you have created or yeah. supported, even at the state level? Yeah. Uh, there was a bill you recently co-sponsored. Yeah. 
There's so. a lot we've co-sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to, is there one you've, you've got in mind? Well, there's a PEG bill. The PEG bill, yeah. To yes, which reinstate support. funding for services like this to the community you don't, as you speak. You don't have community. a vested interest in that one at all. <laughs> you know. Yeah, we support that. And that was actually something, there was a clear contrast between where, where my, um, my opponent the first time was and where I stand on it. And yeah, we support that. We want to make sure that people have access to uh, public television, uh, that make sure that the, uh, the public has ownership over a small piece of the bandwidth, right, to be able to get out mm -hmm. their information. I think that's important. Um, so, yeah, we've, we've co-sponsored that. Um, we've co-sponsored other bills that, that I think share with our vision, you know, including trying to make sure that we're increasing the minimum wage so that it's a living wage. Mm -hmm. uh, we try and make sure that when we are looking at education, we're looking at the productive models across the country, like community schools, where schools become the center of a community, not just a place for the kids to get resources, but for parents to be able to get job resources, mm -hmm. you know, learn English as a second language and have somebody there as a community coordinator uh, to really rally the community uh, to rise up. So we authored that legislation, you know. There's a lot of other pieces. Now, with the, the current folks in power, they, 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 for whatever reason, they don't think that's a good idea. I think they're more interested in, in paying back the people who fund their campaigns. They're more interested in appealing to a narrow, um, cons a very, very conservative constituency that doesn't, you know, that doesn't view public education as a public value the same way um, I might or my neighbors might. Um, so we've, we've had to offer an alternative vision for where we can go as a state. We haven't gone there in the last few years, but once the, the state elects the right people, I think we're, uh, we're, we'll be ready to lead and help them do that. Oh, terrific. All right. Now, how would you, um, at the state level right now, let's talk about that just a bit more, because uh, that experience plus your prior experience mm -hmm. um, put you in a position as a county executive to have worked in different areas that... Not county executive yet. I think you mean the mo the, the Senate leader, Senate Democratic leader? No, that's not about? what I mean. I mean, if you become the county executive. Oh, if exec I become, okay. Right. You gotta give okay. me five more, five more <laughs> weeks, more. we're not there yet. I yeah. know, I know. If we, and I do apologize. That's all right, that's all if right. If you become yeah. county exec, right. you have the state Senate experience as yeah. well as the Milwaukee board member experience. Right, right. Yep. And how do you think those two areas of experience would benefit you in the position? Yeah, I mean, look, having worked to get to the positions I'm in, having worked with other people, uh, working hard to provide a, a vision um, for, for my community that my community believes in, and in some cases we do have to sell it to them, right, and being out there in the public, I think that's important. Um, and look, you know, I think in clear contrast to my opponent, I am, I am not rich, right? Like this, this suit, my wife was joking because we got the, I got this off of Groupon, right? Like I shouldn't give that away, but it, it was it's it, nice looking. Yeah. 70 bucks. Not too bad. <laughs> um, and so anyways, that's my background. So I've had to work for, for every position that I've gotten. And I think that that's, that's how most people get to the jobs that they have in the world, whether it's politics, whether it's in television, whether it's in engineering or, or whether it's in business. Um, and so I think in that regard, having worked and having worked very hard to earn the support of my neighbors and the public by constantly keeping in touch with them, getting back to them when they have concerns, you know, I mean, it was even just walking in, the person at the front desk said, hey, you got back to me within like days, you know, within, within I think it was less than a day on an issue that I had a question on. And that's, I think that's important, right, to having a public official who's going to respond to the public. And yes. so we've, we've worked very hard to, to build that reputation up. And uh, I think that's important for a county executive. To, this is the highest position in the county, and I think that the, the, the public should own this as a public office and have, uh, have somebody in there who's going to advocate for the community and constantly reach out. You know? So we know the importance of things like um, doing public hearings, public listening sessions. We've pledged to do that in every community each and every year. So there's a conversation, a back and forth about what, we, what we're doing, um, but also what we can do better. I think that's important, right? About making sure that we're hiring the best and brightest who, who have at their heart public service, right? That they're gonna be serving our community. Um, and then also making sure that we are correcting long-term. There's been a lot of power consolidated in this office. And that's not my vision of government. That's not an American vision of government. American vision is checks and balances. So I'm committed to making sure we restore checks and balances so one person can't sell land without public approval. 
um, including the airport, the zoo, the museum, and 43 parks. Mm -hmm. That's what this county executive um, has the power to do now because he asked for that power and he's asked for more. Um, and I think that that's dangerous and we need to make sure that we correct that. So I think all of that, um, all of that lends itself to, I, I think we'll do a good job and I'll, I'll expect that the public, if I'm not, that I'll be out there and uh, they'll, they'll be available to let me know. But we're, we're gonna do, uh, we're, I think we're gonna do a good job of convincing people um, when we're heading in a direction because it's gonna be our shared direction that we're gonna move together as a community on. How do you see the Bucks deal affecting Milwaukee? Yeah. Um, there are still people that are somewhat confused, but there are also some elected officials who are concerned about their districts yeah. suffering from the, the establishment setting up, yeah. uh, or, yeah. or that's going to be set up for the Bucks agreement. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, um, I had my concerns when this was moving forward, and um, when we got a seat at the table, and to be clear, we didn't get a seat at the table as legislators oh. until about a week before the thing was going to be passed in the Senate, and it, that, was, that was the point where we finally, the Republicans finally told us where their votes were at, and that allowed us to understand, okay, they're sincere about needing votes, and at that point, we, we, we realized, okay, we can actually have a seat at the negotiating table and actually talk about this. Before that, you know, for five years, they, they, the Republicans viewed Democrats as just being part of the furniture. Um, so this is the first time we're actually in the room as counterparts of trying to figure out, okay, you know, they were actually sincere about trying to keep a business in town after so many businesses have left our state. And so for us, we said, okay, let's figure out what we can do for help. And uh, with that week, we, we, we talked to the Bucks ownership, first of all, um, talked to their representatives and said, look, let me think of, you know, first we thought about where our neighbors are at and what they're interested in. And so we took that to the Bucks leadership, me and three other, other electeds. And uh, we said, look, our neighbors are concerned about jobs. You know, that's the thing that people are worried about more than anything. And not just jobs, but, but quality living wage jobs where you can work for a week, uh, 40 hours, and you're not going to be in poverty, that mm -hmm. you're not going to be worried to go home to a house that's foreclosed on. Mm -hmm. um, that was important. And uh, we brought that up to the Bucks. We also had the concern about our, our neighbors who are struggling to find work, you know, those who are habitually unemployed, the highest unemployment wards. And so we, we brought that up to them and said, we want to make sure that these jobs are targeted at the people who need it the most, people in our community. And uh, we wanted to make sure that there was labor peace um, so that if the, if the uh, workers uh, were feeling like they weren't getting a fair shake, that they could sit down uh, with management and figure that out. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what labor, a labor agreement does. Um, and they agreed. Bucks ownership agreed to those things, and um, and that was important because um, then from there we could work with Republicans genuinely and say, okay, let's figure out how we can improve the parts of the deal that are in the legislation. Um, and that's where we got the uh, the surcharge on tickets, mm -hmm. uh, so that tic the people attending the arena actually pay for it. Not a, not a revolutionary okay. idea, um, and making sure that the bad the the de bad debt piece that my opponent Chris Abley put in there. It's so that we're going to pay for this arena by chasing down people with bill collectors who are already struggling to pay their bills. We thought that that looks pretty horrible, that you're going to pay for an arena for out-of-state billionaires by chasing down people struggling in our own community. Um, so that wasn't just me. I think he thinks it was just me that was doing that. That was a lot of legislators who didn't like that. And that was a lot of people in the public who didn't like that. And we're happy we, we got that done. Um, we couldn't correct all the bad things that, that were in that deal, right? I mean... Uh, the, the county exec, he walked into the room, he put us on the hook for $80 million that we weren't on the hook for before, county taxpayers. And we couldn't change that. That's what he negotiated. Um, I mean, Scott Walker gave us, gave the county of Milwaukee a better deal than Chris Abley did. We, we couldn't save him from himself. He was in the room, he negotiated that. He also negotiated the ability to sell land unilaterally um, at the buck, uh, for, the, for the bucks, where he sold it for a dollar. Um, without, and he made sure he could do that without the public involved, without a public uh, listening session, and without having to go for county board approval. And he did that without the public at the table. That's a bad deal. Um, we couldn't save him from himself as much as we would have liked to. So who's at that table as the county executive in the future when big deals are being negotiated? It matters. You need to have somebody who's not going to get all glossy-eyed in front of somebody powerful. You need to have somebody who's going to remember where they came from, somebody from the community who's going to represent the community, represent our neighbors, and not be afraid to go back to them to sell that deal to them and say, look, here's, here's what the deal is. 
do you think this is a good deal or not? That's what a good public servant would have done in that position, and that's what I would have done if I were in that spot. Um, and I take that in contrast to what's happening now with the domes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's what he did with the Bucks deal. He rushed in without the public, made sure the public couldn't be at the table, um, put us on the hook for $80 million. Again, the public didn't have a say on that at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and he said, we're going to chase down bill, you know, our neighbors with bill collectors. That's where we'll get that money. Let's make it happen. He did all that. But then you look at what's happening with the domes, where all of a sudden uh, Chris Abley's found religion on, on saying, well, we need to do a public hearing on this. Let's, let's make sure that we, we hear from everybody in the public, and let's not rush to spend uh, any kind of money on this. Let's, let's, let's hold off on this. And by the way, when there was a public hearing, he decided not to show up for it. Um, you know, and he's saying, well, you know, maybe this is, maybe we don't, we can't afford this. Maybe we can't do this. And he's really hitting the brakes on this. So think about that. An arena rushed in, the domes, part of our public legacy, part of our heritage, and he's, he's, he's holding off and hinting that we might just tear them down. Um, I think that's, that's, uh, that's, that's dangerous. I think mm -hmm. we need to have a county executive who's going to be consistent and is not going to be afraid of the public and is going to listen to the public and actually know where the public's at uh, when they're rallying behind a public institution and part of our legacy. Okay. So how would you handle the domes? Uh, I think, look, this is, I'm from here. I was born here, I was raised here, right? Uh -huh. And um, my, 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 uh, my parents, they keep sending me pictures of me at the domes when I was a kid, <laughs> and I'm trying to guess the year sometime, and I'm usually off. Um, but, but this is a place I grew up in, right? Okay. And a lot of my friends did, a lot of our neighbors did. It's part of our legacy, it's part of who we are. And so I have that, that the reaction most people did, which is like, well, you gotta protect them, you gotta save them. And I think it's the same with, with when we had this arena. There's a lot of people who rallied around that, and we found the money to do that. I think we can do the same for, for the domes. Now, we need to do it smart. We need to make sure, as a regional institution, uh, something not just Milwaukee loves, but the region does and the state does. So we need to bring them to the table and say, let's figure out how we can find the funds to do this. Um, I also think we need to be realistic with the, co with the cost estimates. Um, my, my opponent, he's put out these inflated dollar amounts that no one else had seen beforehand. I, I think we can do it for $45 million uh, to do a full replacement. That's the numbers that I've heard from folks. Um, so I think we can do it in an affordable way, and I think the public wants to see uh, part of our legacy preserved for the next generation. They're not so quick to throw out, uh, to throw out our heritage. Um, they want to make sure that we preserve that. Every family deserves access to a, a quality park and the domes. The domes provide that for a lot of people, right? It's one of the greatest indoor classrooms around town. As much as people may, may balk at the price, um, it's a whole lot cheaper than taking a field trip for, for kids to a, a real tropical rainforest, right? Uh, or a real uh, desert, you know, in the middle of winter. Um, so for parents, that's a good place. And for schools, that's a good place to teach the kids uh, that they, you know, some of them may never ever see that in, in real life. Um, so that's important. Yeah. That's important to who we are as a community. I recently read information about a bill on the state level that is being um, discussed and possibly passed mm -hmm. um, regarding the county not being able to issue IDs. Yeah. Okay, can you be very quickly share quickly? some oh information gosh. on that? Um, yeah, so there was a bill that moved forward. It was a collaboration between the county and the city. It was a local agreement to be able to provide identification um, for our neighbors who otherwise wouldn't be able to get it. And I think that, that when, when people were pressed, they admitted, look, this is, this is because that the, federal, the federal government, specifically Republicans in the U.S. House and Senate, refused to pass immigration reform to make sure we're correcting for, um, for problems in the system where you know, people say, oh, you need to get in line to become a citizen. There is no clear line anymore, right? And so that needs to be corrected at the federal level. In the meantime, there's a whole host of problems that have, pro that have popped up in local communities. So in this case, the local community said, look, we need to make sure that, that folks have IDs um, so they can go about their lives. Um, and, and they came up with this agreement. And at the state level, they said, we're going to stop on local control. And we're going to get in the way of the ability to actually make that happen. Uh, so that was a bill that unfortunately passed um, just a few weeks ago. And uh, we, we, we did our best to push against it, but um, they were intent on, on stepping in on that one. 
All right, so it's going to impact uh, eligibility for voting. Correct. No, it won't. And this, this ID, just to be clear, would not be, be used for voting. You can't use it. The, the ID law, the state, you know, has very, uh, has highly specific um, forms of identification that a person can use to vote, right? State driver's license, state ID cards, um, you know, you can use a passport. Uh, there's other IDs that you can use, but um, that's not on the list. So that's never been an option to be able to use that card for voting. Okay. So just to be clear, and that was one of the arguments they threw out there is people try and use it for voting. and That wasn't the point of it at all. Uh, all right. They knew that. Um, but I would say in the next election, people do need an ID, right? And if they don't have yes. one, they can stop by the DMV and make sure to get one of those. All so. right. Thank you so much, Senator. Uh, we are out of time. Yeah. And I want to say, I am happy to meet you. Thank you, Val. <laughs> happy to meet you, too. <laughs> All right. And would you like to say any closing words about your candidacy? Yeah, I hope that people get out and vote on April 5th. Um, I think it's important to have a community voice in the county's highest office. You know, um, I've kind of outlined the, the reasons why I'm running, uh, why I think it's important to have somebody you can get a hold of in the county's highest office. Um, and so we've, we've uh, developed strong positions. We've developed a strong, positive campaign. That's how we won the primary after being outspent 20 to 1, is we're not afraid to be out in the community. And uh, we're going to continue to do that um, should I be lucky enough to be representing uh, our county as the executive moving forward. Terrific. Thank you. Have a great day and Thanks. good luck. Thanks. You too. <laughs>